This is part five of how to create a professional website using an existing comp. So in our last episode, we basically created the hyperlink rules for the ATAG. Now, these rules should officially technically go up with SiteNav. This way you don't torture yourself six months from now when you need to make changes. Now, I'm going to turn these the uh, trace image back on, so trace image show. Now, you can see there's my rules, but the font is not the same, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I can eye this, but technically, you should have got the specs for the original comp. So whatever that comp was for the typeface, that's what you can use. We're just going to eyeball this. This appears to be a Times Roman Palatino typeface. So if I select the A tag, double-click the A tag, hit the pencil icon, or double-click, we make some changes here. So let's make the size about 11 pixels, and let's make it... Palatino, because apparently that's what it appears to be. Now that's way too small. Now it should also be all caps. I didn't type in all caps, but I'm going to make this all caps. So uppercase, okay? Uppercase, let's say uppercase. Let's make this 12 pixels, okay? That's looking pretty good so far. Now again, if it has to be that exact typeface, keep in mind the limitations of working with typefaces in HTML. You have to use a typeface the person has on their computer. So if you spec them in some wacky type inside your graphics program, there's gonna be a problem. So let's get our spacing done. So let's go to box, and we want to basically put margin space to the right. So we're gonna put in, a, looks like about, eight pixels of margin space to the right, apply that, okay? Now, we also need to talk to this as a block of type. So we're gonna define this as a block of type. By default, this was a line of type. We're gonna make this a block of type, okay? Now, apparently it needs some more margin space. So I'm going to do, let's do 12 pixels of margin space. Okay, so at this point, you can start finessing this till it basically gets to the way you wish it to look. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to make this, let's make this 15 pixel margin space, and I think it will be about, let's make that 18 pixel margin space. Okay, now, that's about the correct margin space. Notice I took some artistic liberties here too. I didn't call it inside American women, I called it inside a Actually, should have been AW. I was thinking Adobe Illustrator, so I need to change that. It should say inside AW. That's what I meant to, the say, to say. Okay, so this basically gets the spacing inside of here. Next, we're going to position this inside of the div tag. Okay, so I made that correction, and so now it says AW, inside space. W. Now, here's a really cool technique here. The site nav, the site nav had a certain width to it. So we're going to basically make the rule, we're going to adjust the existing unordered list rule and make it the width between here and here. Now here's a super power user technique. It appears that these navigations are roughly in the center of site nav. So I'm going to take a guide here, command semicolon shows my guides again. Remember, because we hid them earlier. Command semicolon, Windows is control semicolon. So command semicolon hides the guide. So we're going to measure the distance. I'm going to get rid of this guide here. We're going to measure the distance between, get rid of this guide. So I want to measure the distance between here and here. So that's how big I make my divs. I'm going to make it 800 pixels so I don't split hairs here. So I'm going to double click unordered list and make the width 800 pixels wide. And here's the cool part. We're going to put it in the center by automatically adjusting it right, automatically left, automatically adjust it to the center of my div. How cool is that? So basically, it's going to be centered to the center of the div tag. Now, I made this 800 pixels wide, but I need to account for the margin space. Okay, so, okay, so I put in... So I put in 800 pixels wide, plus I have to account for my margin space, which is approximately 20 pixels. So we don't need to split hairs here. It's actually, I think the margin space was 18 pixels. So let's just make this plus 20. So now it's 820, so I hit the apply option. It's now going to be in the center, in the center, okay? 
Now, what I want to have happen here, I want to vertically put the content inside my unordered list here, vertically in the center. How do I do that? So I go back to my unordered list and I make the height the same height as the site nav. So site nav, if I want to do this correctly, site nav had a height of 36 pixels. So I'm going to make my unordered list a height of 36 pixels. But I'm not going to change the box height to 36 pixels. I'm going to change the line height to 36 pixels. This is going to vertically put it in the center, in the center. Great power user technique vertically puts in the center of the unordered list. Make a change, save a change. So now if I hide my view, trace image, and unhide this, trace image, and I now give my background color to my site nav, site nav background color, pencil icon, background color of my site nav needs to be black. So if I hit the apply option, there is my unordered list specifically changed Make a change, save a change. Command semicolon hides the guides. Command semicolon hides the guides. Make a change, save a change. Is this fun or what? Okay, so I'm just going to my cursor here because it doesn't look like there's enough space there. Okay, so this is going to be pixel perfect to exactly how I wish to do this. Now I can move on to my news div tag. News div tag. Now to save some time here, I'm just going to copy and paste some text here. Okay, so I'm using this great new extension from the Adobe Exchange here to put in Greek text here. So I'm going to select my news div tag because I'm replacing the content and I'm just going to go to insert and I'm going to pick some Ibsen oral and I'm going to put in one paragraph of information here. And this is on the Adobe Exchange website. Just look for Lorem on the Adobe Exchange website. It basically puts in dummy copy. You can put in Shakespeare, you can put in mumbo jumbo. It's a great extension to have and I use it all the time. This way I can just put in dummy text. The other advantage of using dummy text in a comp is that you're not being distracted and reading the comp. So the comp should basically be in Latin or Greek text. This way you're not being distracted with the text itself. You can just focus on the design and the flow. Okay, so there's my content. Now, this in this particular case, this header is going to be called free stuff. So free stuff. Okay, now free stuff. Now in this particular case, they're using specific. Uh, they they basically have uh, a class tag on free stuff. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So in this particular case, free stuff. Let's basically format it out this div tag. So basically it appears the way one or two appears. We need to go back to the news div tag, news div tag, which is which basically is part of our content wrapper here. So I select this, hit the pencil icon, and we're gonna go back to box. So this is going to drop down roughly. We want this to start. Let's cancel out of that. Command semicolon. We want this basic paragraph to start right about there. So the distance between here and here is 32 pixels. 30 pi Notice it says it over far right here, 32 pixels. So we're going to go back to news and we're going to pad it from the top 32 pixels, which means we need to minus, minus 32 pixels from the height. Now in general, if the height ha is just going to flow for its content, remember we changed the height of this to a specific height in a previous video. So basically, right on money. Now, it looks like this is going from the left a little more. So from the left, we're going to say plus three pixels, which means we need to minus three pixels. Now, if you don't minus those pixels, it's gonna knock it out of the div tag. Okay, so let's do another plus two pixels, which means we need to minus, minus two pixels. Okay, and there you go. Now, free stuff, how are we gonna create this box for free stuff? We're we gonna create a div tag? No. We're gonna put this inside of a table? I don't think so, not my website. So we're gonna basically create an H tag. So we're gonna create an H tag. Let's make that an H2 tag. 
Now, we don't have a rule. We have a rule for an H2 tag for the entire site, but we don't have a rule for the H2 tag for this particular div tag. How do we do that? We select the tag, make the rules. Select the tag specifically for this H2 tag inside of news, which means it's not going to affect other places. Select the tag, make the rules. Select the tag, make the rules. So again, H2 inside of news, inside of main content wrapper. So this is going to be, it appears to be all caps here. So we're going to make this uppercase. We're going to make the size of this. This appears to be 18 pixels. And again, they're using a Times Roman typeface. So we're just going to pick Palatino. Okay, now that's still way too big. Plus this has to be white, so we're going to make this white. Okay, it's still way too big. Plus it needs to indent a little from the left here. We'll fix that in just a second. So let's get the size right. Let's make that 12 pixels. Now, again, if this was spec from the client, you should have the size. You should have the size. This way you're not guessing. I'm strictly just trying to mimic the comp by trial and error, which I suggest you do. Now, I could have looked at that and told you exactly what it was, but that doesn't get you to think about how to solve problems. Okay, so now we're going to go to box and we're going to make the background of this box the same color as this box. So I color sample the color, so I apply the option. Okay, so now it's the same color as the box. And we're going to make it the same height as the box. Now, notice that this box is going to cover up this, but I have other ones I can use as a reference point. So this is fine if this box is going to cover this up. Now, I want to vertically, it doesn't look like it's vertically centered, but I do want to vertically center this. I'm going to basically say that that's about half inch or 36 pixels. I'm going to take the box height, make that 36 pixels high in the apply option. Okay, so that's 36 pixels high, but I want to pad it from the left. So I go to box padding just from the left. Let's pad this from the left, five pixels. So that's five pixels of padding from the left. So it's starting to look good so far. Now it also looks like that their tie face, again, this could have been spec from the original design. But just so let's have a little bit of fun here. I'm gonna to go to block and I'm gonna put a little bit of spacing in here. So I'm gonna put 1.1 M space. In desktop publishing world, this is known as tracking or kerning. Tracking is multiple letters. I'm gonna basically just make this 0.2 pixels M space. Okay, hit the OK button, make a change, save a change. Now, how do we get this F to be a little box around here? Okay. Well, we can do this very simply by making a class tag for this. We can make a class tag that surrounds that tag. Okay, so first of all, let's get to the dimensions of that box. So we can actually just select the box and Command Control Shift 4. I'm doing this just to get the size of the box. So that box appears to be. 22 pixels by 22 pixels. So I'm going to make a class tag. Now, how do I make a class tag? I'm going to make a class tag by simply hitting the plus symbol. And I'm basically going to call this period, whatever the class is. When you basically put in the period symbol, that's going to be the name of the class. So we're going to call this period news uh, uh, initials. News initials, it's camel case act, uh, box. Okay, so news initial box. So this is simply going to put a box. So we're going to go to box and we're going to make this 22 pixels by 22 pixels. And we're going to make the background color the same background color that's inside of there. Now classes are defined, important step here. Classes should be on top here. Classes appear after the HTML text. HTML followed by class, followed by the div tag starting with wrapper. Class tags me with a period. Okay, so classes are defined, then classes are assigned. Classes are defined, then classes are assigned. Now notice that the F and the B are bigger, so we're going to make a slight change to this.